This is the InMotion V13 electric unicycle. Now this is one of the fastest electric unicycles ever made and it comes stock out of the box shipped to your door capable of going 54 plus miles per hour and this thing is just phenomenal it cruises like no other it cruises fast it cruises smooth and once you get used to it it's crazy What's up dudes, Chooch, back with another one. Today, I wanna to do a full review of the InMotion V13, explain to y'all everything about this wheel that I've learned in, in about a week of riding it. So you can see right here, I, I'm gonna put a little riding footage in the beginning of this video, uh, just to show you, you can really ride this thing. Once you get used to it and you get used to the weight, um, you can ride this wheel way differently than any other EUC. Any other EUC at this speed across grass like this, you know, it just feels like, you know, kind of shaky and unstable. I mean, it makes the EUC kind of feel like a toy if you're trying to ride it across like uneven terrain really fast, like grass, a field or something like this. But with this one, with the weight, with the suspension, with the wheel size and the power, it's nothing. The reason y'all haven't seen uploads guys in about a week is because I've been riding this thing guys. I've been racking up footage, um, just going everywhere I could think of riding this thing, doing some city riding, a little bit of off-road riding, um, even a little bit of jumping with this big machine and I've really gotten used to it and, and I've learned exactly how to ride this thing and how to appreciate this wheel guys and I really am liking it a lot. really am and it's it's not this wheel is not for everybody I'll tell you that but once you get used to it once you ride it for about a week um, going to any other wheel is gonna just feel like man any other electric unicycle you get on after riding this thing is just gonna feel like so lightweight and like a toy almost which isn't a bad thing you'll be able to just whip around any other EUC once you ride this thing for a little while you'll be able to just shred any other EUC even harder but I'm telling you, this thing is, this thing is a tank in a good way. is a cruiser, man. It's like a tank cruiser, bro. Like, I, I've really never ridden 22 inch wheels much. The only 22 inch wheel I ever rode was the Abrams and I rode it for like a few minutes. But I can really appreciate a 22 inch wheel now after having this thing for a week, guys. And the cool thing about a 22 inch wheel is um, it cruises fast so even with like not a lot of effort like you know like whenever you're on like a v12 and you're trying to cruise like 30 plus you're kind of into it you know you're kind of leaning you're into it you're bending your knees making sure you're not hitting those bumps and whatnot with this dude you really it's effortless you just kind of cruise and it's like with no effort at all without really trying you're going like 35 plus and then once you kind of dip into it and get that lean on and you know get that little little you know that little dip down going and lean into it you can get this thing up to 55 plus and even at 55 man or you know 54 55 uh depending upon the battery level um even at those speeds guys it doesn't seem like you're going that fast like on my, my motorcycle, honestly, like riding my little motorcycle around at 55 seems a little bit sketchier than riding this. And I'm, I'm used to riding EUCs, but I'm just saying it feels safe. Riding this thing at 50 miles an hour plus feels safe. And it's crazy to say that, but you got this 22 inch wheel, this huge wide tire, and this machine is just, it's heavy, but in a good way. Once you get used to the weight, once you get adapted to the weight a little bit and you can learn how to swing it and sway it, 
This isn't a snappy wheel. This is more of a swing and sway wheel. Not a kind of a snap and pop wheel like the V12 is or like the um, Master or something like this is. But the cool thing about this and I, I want to compare this to the S22 because the Whenever I got the S22, it unlocked a whole new type of ride for me and made me appreciate the EUC's um, ability with suspension to be able to just tank over stuff. You can really ride this thing into um, stair sets and sketchy situations, whether it be roots or drops or um, rocky, eroded, you know, um, whatever it may be, of transitions on trails or anything like that. This wheel and the S22 are just two wheels you can really ride into anything with just an amazing amount of trust in the machine's ability to get through it. And this wheel being heavier, and it this is like a hundred, you know, 115 pound wheel right here. Um, and then I'm, you know, about 140 pounds, 145 pounds. it was intimidating at first I was like ah oh, the first you know day or so I was like ah oh, man I, I like my lighter weight wheels a lot and I was just thinking in my head you know I don't know how people are gonna perceive you know take this thing when they first get it out of the box like I don't know how the typical EUC customer is gonna feel about it I, and I talked about this in one like one of my videos in the past this is perfect for the people that live like in the suburbs that are kind of close to the city, don't live like within the city, but live within maybe, you know, a 15 minute drive to the city. Dude, you can get on this and safely get on those, on those main roads that are like 45 miles an hour, like 45 mile an hour roads um, where the bike lane isn't safe. We all know that the bike lane on these roads isn't the safest spot to ride. So you can comfortably get in the lane of traffic and travel with traffic, guys, at 45 miles an hour and ride to the city on this thing.
and it is safe to do it. I mean, I really feel safe on this machine, guys. I really do. As opposed to riding any of my other EUCs, like in the main roadway, guys. Like legitimately, this thing is like an actual piece of kit to ride in the main roadway. Uh, that 22 inch tire is, it just goes over all the potholes, the suspension. Man, I've just tanked over big potholes on this thing. Um, with no problems. I mean, really big potholes, no issues. And I'm the 22 inch wheel, guys, it cruises roads like no other. I mean, it, compared to a 19 inch wheel, the 22 inch wheel just cruises so much faster and so with so much like ease. It's incredible. I, mean, I really do like it. And once you get used to the weight, guys, you'll be able to you'll be able to take this thing and like literally ram it into like stumps and sketchy drops and stuff like that. Like I'm talking like there's like some stumps and just some debris and shit off to the side of the trail. And I was like, hey, let me try to jump it. And I didn't know like how compact it was. I didn't know what was under it necessarily. But with a big wheel like this, the big tire, the big weight, just the overall stature of this thing and how it rides, you can just ram into all kind of shit and just jump it, go through it, whatever it is, and this thing will handle it, guys. It's so much fun. It is a big machine, but once you get used to it, man, it's no problem. It's no problem at all. Like, you can literally just, like, and the suspension works, bro. Like, um, suspension is great on this one. I really am liking the suspension a lot. And it, see what I'm saying? This is more of a sway wheel. Not a snappy wheel, but a sway to turn. But it's not bad once you get used to it, man. I think that, like, I think the older guys, this is more of like a wheel for some old, like the older fellas than, than the younger folks out there. This is, this is for the, the older fellas that really want something nice to commute on. Um, they, this, they're not going to be jumping a lot. You can jump on this thing. Um, you can do your little urban tricks and you know your one footed spins and your, you know, whatever it may be. But this is just, this is, Call it what it is, man. This is a commuter's dream of an electric unicycle right here. Cool thing about this, guys, is the batteries are independent on this thing. So you got 1500 watt batteries on either side of this thing. So if one side messes up on this thing, you got the other side that's gonna go ahead and support it. Um, you got redundancy on this wheel, which is what you want. It, it is good to have. You got a lot of safety within the in, in motion wheels. Um, you have two hall sensors on this wheel. That's basically what is doing the calculations and keeping you upright. And this wheel has two of them, so if one fails, the other one's gonna be in there to keep you upright and back up. So we got redundancy just like you do with airplanes. And with a unicycle, I think it's comparable to an airplane because if, if anything goes wrong with this thing, it's gonna be bad. And same thing with an airplane. If anything goes wrong with an airplane, it's gonna be bad. So that's why you have two of everything on an airplane. And same with like this thing, you want redundancy, man. You want backup in your system. So that's why um, we're seeing in motion do this. Like the thing I love about this wheel is just the build quality, bro. Like the, the shit, like it hurts, bro. Just my knuckles, just heat. This thing is built like better than anything I own, bro. Like I swear, like you, you could tie this thing, th you could, you could tie this thing to a crane, bro, and it would work better than a wrecking ball to take a building down because it's just built so well. But it's just so freaking heavy, dude. Like, there's no way, I, I, I don't see this thing being in any race circuit out there. Um, I don't see it, this thing being raced at all in any way, shape, or form, unless you're doing like a, a, a one of the, like the, they do in New York, the Broadway bomb, or like a straight line drag race, or like a, a cross town race, like where you're doing like a urban race, race or something like that. And you're going across town um, just 
you know, through traffic and just doing like a regular commute type thing, but it might be a race scenario. That'd be the only way this thing would win. Or, it, you know, this is not gonna be something that wins an off-road race or at like a street race event, like at Apple Valley. It's just way too heavy. But that doesn't mean it's a bad wheel. And there's a lot of days that I would choose to ride this thing, even though it wouldn't be one that I would choose to race, if that makes sense, okay? So just put, put it that way. And this wheel is 126 volts, just like the Kingsong S22. You can use the S22 charger um, on this wheel, uh, or you can use the Inmotion V13 on the S20, uh, V13 charger on the S22. So just telling you like, the same pins and 126 volts on this wheel and the S22. And it is, some, some people say it's 110 pounds, some people say it's 115 pounds. I haven't put it on a scale because it would probably break whatever scale I put it on. Um, but it, this thing it, is heavy, so it's either like 110 to 115 pounds, um, depending who you ask. Uh, let's see. One thing I do love about this, guys, I took notes on, on it, and I, I love the fact that it is a, and a lot of people, other people, reviewers have hinted at this as well, but it is true, the, the skinny profile of this wheel, like, see how skinny this thing is, bro? Like, it, it, it's not much between your legs. Like, it's, it really is skinny. And so it makes it really easy to handle. Even though it's a heavy wheel, like, you know, like it's a heavy, and I, I've gotten used to it now. Like I've gotten used to picking it up, I've gotten used to riding it, I've gotten used to, you know, handling it, and everything like that, like, after a week of using it, um, and it, it feels normal now. Like when you first get this thing, compared to all your other EUCs, it's just gonna feel like ridiculously heavy. But after a week of using it, taking it in and out of the car, um, and dealing with it, you're gonna like it. Like, I, I don't see a problem with the weight. Like, it just feels quality. Doesn't feel heavy now, it feels quality. So that's the best way to put it. So, you got a 4,500 watt motor on this thing, guys, and the motor feels really powerful, bro. Like, the motor on this thing feels way more powerful than any other wheel, and that's where a lot of the weight is. A lot of your weight is in the motor hub of this thing, and that's just, it's so overbuilt, dude. Like, the motor hub of this thing, and like the whole, like this whole part, bro, like the motor hub down here, I know it's dirty, I've been mudding it. But dude, the rim and the motor hub on this thing are built well. And I think it's the same, like the, the rim material is so thick. It's, the mo it's like the best built rim on any EUC I've, I've seen by far. I mean, it really is. And the best rim and motor hub, like the, everything about that whole area on this EUC, it's just nice, bro. Like, you can look at it and tell the quality. You look at this compared to the b goad wheels, like the rim and motor hub, and this this is, bro, this is quality right here. I would have cleaned it for the for this video, but I'm going to ride it tomorrow, so no point in cleaning it. And the top speed on it right now, guys, so the top speed I've gotten it to on, on the little display on the top is like legit with no like free spin picking up or anything like that. Legit like the maximum speed reading I've gotten on this thing on the top is 56 miles an hour. Um, and the maximum I've personally seen like looking down on the top of this thing is 54 miles per hour. Like where I was riding and like I looked down, I glanced down at the top and I'm going 54 like on, on the screen. I don't have any GPS stats. I haven't run any GPS at all to tell my top speed, but I can tell you from experience, bro. Like I, I generally can kind of know exactly what speed I'm going on at EUC. I've been riding these things since 2015, and I can tell you pretty much precisely, um, you know, whenever I'm going over 50 miles an hour. And I can tell you, dude, this thing, this thing hauls ass, bro. Like there's no way to like it. It's fast and it does not feel fast, bro. And, and that is, that's the weird and scary part about this thing, bro, is I feel like I could go 20 more miles an hour on it. Like legitimately, I feel like I could go 20 more miles an hour on it. And the only, the, the thing is, when you're gonna get wobbles. When you're getting, used, when you're getting used to this wheel, you're gonna get wobbles on it. And for, and that's the one thing that I'm kind of scared with most people that get this wheel as a, as a first wheel, 
I don't want people going like out and taking this thing up to top speed and then going to break, bro, and then you're gonna get wobbles like hell, dude. If you're a new rider and you're going, taking this thing up to 50 miles an hour and you are not like, you don't know what you're doing and you go to go, go from 50 miles an hour to braking, as soon as you go to put on the brakes, bro, you're gonna start wobbling. And it's just cause it, you get like tank slap, like on a motorcycle, you know, like whenever you lose control and you get like that tank slap where your handlebars are jerking around and stuff. You really can lose control on this thing because it's so much weight. And if your legs aren't strong, if you haven't been riding for enough years, like, dude, like my legs are only strong because I've been riding EUCs for as long as I have. And my legs have only adapted enough strength to wield those EUCs that are like 50, you know, 60 pounds. And my legs just don't have the strength or haven't adapted the strength yet to control something that's 115 pounds. And that's whenever like when, on my first few rides, I just noticed dude, like I, I got wobbles like crazy, bro. And it would, there'd be like a few corners I would take and I'd be fine and I, you know, it, I'd go into it calculated and controlled and I would be like, all right, let me, let me do it. And then the next corner, and like the next section, I'd take it up a little bit faster. I'd go a little bit faster and I'd try to put on the brakes and I'd get those wobbles, dude. And it scares the shit out of you, dude. It really, it scared me bad because I'd get those wobbles like crazy. And I noticed after the first two days of riding it, I, I did two charge cycles. The person before me had turned the braking down to zero. And I'm one of those people, whenever I first get my wheel or whatever, I just get it and ride it, dude. I get it out of the box and ride it and assume it's gonna be pretty good and I can adapt to it. And I, I just think like it, it's ride or error if it's not riding right. But I was getting wobbles like crazy, bro. I literally come into a corner and I'd lean back, and it, I'd lean back, 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 and it felt like it wouldn't break, bro. But I'd lean as hard as I could back on these pads and I'd finally get it to break, but my weight would be so far back, it would just be wobbling. Like all my weight would be shifted back. And so it would just wobble, bro. And the, where I would find it most prevalent would be on like the canyon roads where I'm coming down like a hill into a corner with like a steep, kind of a steep grade. And I'm trying to break for that corner. And that's where the braking on it was turned down to zero. And the acceleration was turned up to 100%. And so I would come into my corners, dude, and it would just almost lose control. And then finally I was like, all right, there has to be something up. And I looked in the setting and the braking was turned to zero. And I turned the braking up to 100%, acceleration up to 100% and braking to 100%. And that's where I've been riding it since the second day I've had it. And it has been great, guys. I'm, it made all the difference in the world. Once I turned the braking assist up to 100%, Dude, it pretty much it pretty much eliminated all the wobble problems I've had on this thing. That literally did it, dude. And I almost crashed really, really bad, like three or four times, just because I'm an idiot and didn't check the stats on this thing. Looking assist on this thing is huge because it's such a heavy wheel. You have to have the braking assist on. You have to have it. And you will notice it, dude. As soon as you start leaning back, you have that braking assist turned up, it's, dude, it's like butter compared to you trying to wrench back on these power pads and just lose control wobbling, that brake assist is great. You don't notice it, dude. On like the V12, on like the V12 high torque and the high speed, if you have a good pair of power pads on that thing and you have your braking assist like turned down to zero or either 100%, it's, I mean, it's noticeable, but not nearly as noticeable on this thing. Like your braking assist is very important on this wheel, okay? Keep that in mind.
And it, that would be a huge thing. So for a lot of people that are experiencing wobbles on this heavy machine, that will pretty much fix them. And for the, for the people that still are experiencing wobbles, the best thing I can say is keep riding, get as much practice as you can in, but do it, push it to the edge where you get those wobbles a little bit, but do it safely, okay? Do it safely just to learn the dynamics of it, okay? Because you don't want to really push this thing. I, I've been pushing this thing, and I got wobbles on this thing the other day. Even though I had my braking adjusted on this thing, I got speed wobbles on it because I was sending it pretty hard, and it was on a road that was covered in the freaking salt because you know how all the snow is melting right now? And it's all that salt they've been putting on the roads for the whole winter season is everywhere right now, all over the canyon roads. And I come into a corner full speed hitting the brakes on this thing and then I hit the salt and dude, I got sideways on this thing, bro. I'm talking power drifting a 115 pound electric unicycle sideways on that, <laughs> on that road salt is, dude, I slowed it down after that. I'll admit, bro, I took it from about 100 to about 4%, bro. I slowed it down and just was like, all right, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sending, I almost sent this thing into the guardrail, bro. I literally about sent it into the guardrail holding my brand new Insta360 X3 camera that I just bought, dude. Like literally sideways on this thing, on that salt, bro. Just speed wobbles and sliding sideways. Uh, but I saved it, dude. We're good, we're good. All right, so another thing is too on this, so you see right here, I broke this power pad completely off, like literally. This is just from leaning, guys, and it's because you have to lean very hard on this wheel, especially if you're a lighter weight rider like I am. You gotta lean so hard, and this is the main, this leg right here is what I lean with, bro. So like, this, my right leg, whenever I'm riding, this side is like my throttle side. This is where my main weight is. So whatever side you can ride one-footed better with, like you have a side that you can ride one-footed better with. I don't care how good you are at riding with both feet. You got one side you like better. And my right foot is the side I kick, like I kick a soccer ball with, and then the side that I can ride an EUC one-footed better with than any other side. And this is the side where I really accelerate hard on. So my left foot does a lot more of my control. And, and the veteran riders are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. It, it, for the first two years of riding the UC, this really doesn't make sense. But the veteran riders guys know exactly what I mean. Like this is where you get a lot of your acceleration guys is from your predominant, like your kicking foot. And so whenever I go to accelerate, I'm, I'm on it so hard that I've ripped this power pad off right here. But this side's fine because this is mainly my control side. My left is where I'm really using this foot to navigate my terrain and using it just to steer and everything. And then this is just my power side. And so that's why this is ripped all the way off. So be careful with that. Um, with this wheel, you are putting a ton of force on whatever whatever power pad you buy um, on this thing. So ideally, I probably should have cut these to and, and spaced them out a little bit instead of having it so locked in. But I like, I really like the locked in feeling. And then I just looked down one day and I, I saw that I literally had torn, torn the thing. And it almost is nice, like I almost like it. Like if it had a little bit more rigidity than it does, it would be great to have that flex in there, you see what I'm saying? Like, I almost like it. Like, it's almost perfect, but it's just holding on by a thread. And if this thing breaks all the way off while I'm hard accelerating, I'm just gonna keep leaning forward, bro, and just completely bust ass, dude. Like, I literally was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, dude, if this power pad fails on me right now, I'm just gonna face plant off the front because I'm literally putting so much force on this right here that, like, this is my lifeline, bro. It's literally this, like, <laughs> This 3D print right here. So um, I either got to get a new power pad or um, uh, get put some new ones on there. Complete. I, I tried super gluing it, and super glue does not work with these 3D prints. So don't try it super glue. It's just a waste of time, really.
okay, if you had like all your electric unicycles sitting side by side, like out of all the ones they make, and we're like, hey, go pick the nicest one out of all of them, like just some random kid that was like five years old, and he'd probably walk up to this one and, and pick this one. Like if you were like, hey, go pick the most expensive, nicest EUC out of all the ones over there. And it could be all the EUC has ever made. And then this one be like in the mix of them. And the kid would probably pick this one. And he'd probably be right. Because it, I mean, it's heavy, dude. It's high quality, but it's, it's fast. I think it has enough range for most people out there to do their, their daily commutes. Like. So the whole thing with this wheel is you're just, you're riding everywhere faster on it. And that's why I honestly think the range is, it, everybody's saying, hey, oh, the range isn't as good on that thing. It's because, dude, you're riding this thing faster. Even at your medium, at your medium level, um, your medium speed, I should say, on this is just so much, so much faster than riding an EXN or like an RS19 or, or any of the other wheels around just because how big the, you had a 22 inch wheel with great suspension and a heavy build on this thing and it even when you're going like 30 miles an hour dude even for like a newer rider for me dude if riding 30 miles an hour on this thing it feels like i am it's it feels like i'm going slow but i'm really going 30 miles an hour you know like 30 miles an hour is not slow for an euc but on this thing it for a seasoned rider, just because of how smooth everything works on it and how big this wheel is, it's gonna feel like you're going slow. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna tend to ride everywhere faster. You're gonna tend, like if you're a person that typically rides at 30 miles an hour, you're gonna ride this thing at 40 miles an hour. And so that's where, what's gonna happen is you're gonna drain battery quicker on it. But it's not a bad thing, guys. Like I get on this thing with a full charge. I, I go out there, I can tell you how long because I, I can tell you with the recordings, I'll, I'll, I'll record pretty much my whole ride on this thing. And whenever I go out to leave on this thing, I can get about an hour and 20 minutes of hard riding on it, guys. And that's like, if I bring it down to about 20%. So an hour and 20 minutes of just peeling out everywhere. I'm talking just hauling total ass on this thing for about an hour and 20 minutes. And that's what I've been able to get out of. And like mileage varies a lot because if you're a person that rides in mountains, whether you're a city rider, a person that rides in a straight line for the whole time, um, range, like, range is really kind of a hard thing to tell with this wheel in particular. Um, just because the, the, like, if you're a person that gets on it and just cruises elegantly, you're gonna be able to get way more than somebody that gets on this thing and cruises at 50 miles an hour everywhere, okay? So it's just, that's, that's the reason, guy. I mean, that's the reason that the ranges are just so varied on the, re the reported ranges. But overall, I think it's a great wheel. So if you buy this wheel, guys, you're gonna wanna have a stand just like this. I'm gonna link this red stand below. This is beefier and heavier duty than any of the other electric unicycle stands you're gonna see like this on the EUC website. This one is a, it's a motorcycle chalk, um, but this one, I'll link it below. This is the one you're gonna to wanna to get for the V13. Check out like the easy use on this. This is perfect, guys. And then you just, boom, look at that. Like, dude, that's the stand you wanna have. Ram the thing in there, you're good to go. So, but it makes it way easier to fool with, you know? It's nice, like, like rubber, dude. This is definitely the nicest fender on any you see we've seen so far. And it has like a metal support under there. See that metal support under there to keep the rigidity of it and kind of hold it, hold its place. And then another thing too on this, like see these, so this shell is hard, bro. Like this shell is literally like the hardest EUC shell I've ever seen. And then, these right here are actually like titanium, bro. Or I don't know what this is made of, <laughs> but this is some other harder stuff. So if this thing ever did crash and it slid on these, dude, like these are extremely nice. 
right here. These little crash protectors right here. And these are shields. The batteries on the inside of this thing are like coated in this gel to protect them. And then you have this on the outside too. So in the case of a crash or something like this thing lost control and slid across the ground, it has this whole nice protection right here. And then this hard shell. Um, and I mean, there's no way that you could crash this thing as fast as it goes and to get hit by a truck. And I, I still don't think it would penetrate to the batteries. So like, I mean, that's a really good peace of mind on this thing. And that's like, the weight on this thing, guys, is because of all the, that stuff. Like, you see like the Master, the Vigo Master, where it, it literally has like the plastic uh, battery covering on it. And dude, if you crash that thing as fast as that wheel goes, it's just gonna get, you, the batteries are gonna be torn open, bro. And so this is like, this thing right here, there's no way. Like, it, this is just armor, dude. Like, hard armor, and then you got that protection. Like, dude, everything on this wheel is so nice, dude. I like, I like the spikes on it. The roll cage is crazy nice. And I like the stock tire, guys. So I like the stock tire a lot. The only thing is, dudes, for most people, it's just, for most people that ride on the road, you're gonna wanna change the tire, I think. Just because this stock tire, the, the, like, if you're not a person that likes to ride trails and likes to go and find, um, you know, off-road spots, and you're only a street rider, you're gonna wanna change this tire out, I think. Just because once you're up to like 40 miles an hour and you try to throw this thing into a corner, um, it just doesn't corner as well as a street tire. Just because it's this big surface right here, you want something a little bit skinnier um, and a, round, a little bit skinnier and rounder, you can really lean over, like more of a motorcycle style profile tire that you can actually lean over. Because this thing is hard, man. Once you get this thing up to 40 miles an hour, it's hard to lean it, especially with that tire. So just keep it in mind. But I wouldn't change the tire. So my type of riding, I like that dual sport type of riding. So I, I want the Navis. I, I, I want to be able to go find trails and take this thing off road and whatnot. And I would never, you know, I wouldn't change the tire just for a little bit of street riding I do. So, but for a lot of people, man, if you're only, if you live in the city, I would definitely, dude, I would change that thing out in a minute. That's it, dude. I think it's a sick wheel. What a stellar wheel. If you want to pick up this wheel, links below guys, e-wheels, rev rides, or alien rides, pick the retailer of your choice. It gives me a little kickback, helps me keep making these videos at no extra cost to you. Another note, you don't have to start with this wheel. If you see this video and you want to get into electric unicycles and you see this thing, you're like, dude, $4,000, that's a little bit much totally agree man you can start with a wheel that's half this price and really enjoy it this one's just for the the people that are into the hobby the people that are seeking top quality and high speeds and they got the money to throw at you know the best of the best electric unicycle but i'm not telling you you got to buy this one i get a kickback just as much so on any of the other brands or wheels that are half this price so if you want to pick up any electric unicycle use the links below to get that one i'm not telling you you gotta buy this one i understand it is a good chunk of money but it is a nice product and this video is just to tell you all about it so if you want to see more of the InMotion v13 throw it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and i will see you in the next one